Hey, it's Mike from The Mike Wagner Show. Thanks for tuning in to The Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM. If you're interested in sponsoring my show, you can send me an email to themikewagnershow at gmail.com, or you could also donate to the uh, podcast. Just go to the Donate Listen site, and um, you can also donate whatever you like. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. For those who are interested, Anchor can give you everything you need in one place for free, which means right from your phone or computer. We've got creation tools. It allows you to record and edit podcasts so it sounds great. And those distribute the podcast for you so you can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple, Google, many more. And you can make money from the podcast with no minimum listenership. So download the Anchor app for free or go to Anchor FM to get started. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the MikeWagnerShow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Hired by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take The Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to The Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow The Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a wonderful lady who was born and raised in Riga, Latvia, now in Toronto, Canada. She's a former figure scare, now a singer and actress. She's got an upcoming single that's coming out and also an upcoming movie. She keeps herself very, very, very busy during these times. And um, she was in the, the Pet, Petricor, Unmasking, Artificial Selection, and she also... Um, had uh, an album out which got some uh, really good um, reviews called Behind Closed Doors. We'll play one of the tracks um, later on as well, too. That was in 2014. And um, she also did a little bit of comedy as well, too. Maybe she can do a comedy sketch. And live, ladies and gentlemen, from beautiful Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and from Russia with Love, the very, very multi-talented Olga Horsak. Olga, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. That was quite an intro. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it. That probably was the best intro I've heard. <laughs> well, that's greatly appreciated. Yeah. And um, we'd love to hear more about what you got. And um, you're a one-time former figure skater, and now you're a singer and actress and also looking to get into comedy. And you were uh, born in Latvia, and now you're in Toronto, and you've got um, – you had an album that came out in 2014, and you also had some singles out as well, too. And you also had a couple of movies in the works, and you've got one coming up in 2020. And before we get into all that, tell us how you got started. Um, all started? Like, yes. You mean the acting and singer world? Well, actually, actually start off with you uh, being in uh, Latvia, you know, working away as a figure skater, oh, then going, becoming yeah, a singer. Yeah, very beginning. <clears throat> very okay. beginning. So, yeah, I was a figure skater uh, back home in Latvia. All started when I was five years old. My brother, he was a hockey player, and I remember I was crying and telling my parents that they love him more than me because he got the skates and I didn't. So there was the whole drama in my in my childhood. Um, and my parents gave me skates, my first pair of skates when I was five, at Christmas, and I remember it vividly how they brought me to the skating ring for my first practice, and everybody was laughing at me and pointing the finger because I was a very, very tall kid, and usually figure skaters, they start from the age of two or three, so they were already super confident on the ice, skating around, and I was just like holding um, to the boards, and I was really, really scared, and I remember how they were laughing at me in that moment that decided I really, really want to skate. I don't think I wanted 
to skate just because I loved being on air ice, but I wanted to prove uh, those kids who were pointing finger at me. And that's how it started. I, 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 I told my parents I, I will go on the ring together with my brother. I was looking up to him. Um, and that's how it all started. And I won my first gold medal at the age of 12 at the national championship. Um, and it's kind of um, became a dream. It, it became an obsession. I was full in love with figure skating. I was, it, it was school. Then there was ice school, ice. Um, I remember we had a practice like seven in the morning and I would go to school and then I would come back on the ice for the rest of the day. And uh, obviously my, my dream was to, to get medals at the, at the big level competition like European Championship or World Championship. Um, and my first world, uh, my first European Championship was when I was 16. Um, I placed 23rd. And I was really, really excited because I got in the top 30 and I, it was my first big competition. So it was really exciting for me. And the same year I, I did the Worlds, I got also in top 30. Um, and the next year, unfortunately, during the World, uh, World Championship, I collided with another skating during the warm-up, during the six-minute warm-up. And she broke her arm, but I broke... Um, two discs between my spine. Ouch. They correct. Yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't wasn't um a fun uh time for me. And when I came back home I had to spend seven months in the hospital and doctors told me that I can come back on the ice if I want, but it's really risky because if something would go off I would probably had a chance to be paralyzed. So I got super, super scared, and I remember I, I tried to go back on the ice, but it, it was completely different because, like, I was too much uh, in my head constantly thinking about my injury and thinking that um, my parents were really nervous that they were kind of thinking that I have a life ahead, and I thought, okay, my life is done as soon as my skating is done. Mm -hmm. So I had to stop. And I remember I was super lost. I was 17. Uh, I didn't have many friends because all my friends were skaters. And I spent most of my time on a skating ring. And that was the first time when I was like, okay, what's next? What's going to be next for me? Um, I was really interested in, in music in the early age. I, 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 um, I, I played piano. And um, I, I wrote different melodies, and my dream was to write music for one of my programs, and I was working on it. And I thought, in maybe by the age I'm 18, I can finally write a tune I can skate to. So I spent a lot of time with my piano as well. So that was kind of the only thing what kind of kept me sane is, is my pian piano. I, I started playing again. And start spending more time with it, and um, I remember I gained so much weight. It was um, it was interesting time of my life, uh, being lost at, at at such a young age. But somehow, um, I had I had a, I had an amazing mom. I have an amazing mom who was really supporting me and um, talking to me. And, and trying to figure out what to do next. And she knew how determined I am. And I think being in sport teaches you to be super determined, super goal-oriented. And you kind of like wake up every day with this goal and, and you see this goal in front of you. So when that that been taken away from me, it was really hard um, to adjust to the life where you kind of don't have anything to look for and to work hard for. So when I was uh, 16, before my injury, I went to Canada for the summer camp, skating summer camp. A couple of skaters went to Canada from Europe, and, and a couple of Canadian skaters went to Europe. And I really, really um, liked, the Canada, uh, liked Canada, and I liked people, and I didn't speak English back then, but I really loved it, the sound of it. And I thought, oh, my God, I really want to skate for Canada. I really want to work with Canadian coaches. They're so nice because Russian coaches are really strict and um, completely different method. And I was like, wow, nobody nobody is um, lashing out on you. Everybody's so nice and polite. I was, I was 
uh, remember first time visit Canada was just mesmerized. Um, and I applied for documents to move to Canada when I was 16, and I got them when I was 20. And I remember uh, I was already uh, studying in university. I was getting a degree in kinesiology, and kind of my life started um, somehow um, get into into normal normal um, young girl life, I would say, with friends in university and, and, and having a boyfriend and kind of have my own hobbies and interests. Um, and then I got uh, papers when I was 20 and I had 90 days to enter the country to get my um, PR. And I told my mom, no, I'm probably not going to go. I have life here. I already figured out. But I, I couldn't sleep because I'm the kind of person I believe that Whatever happens, happens for the reason. And I couldn't sleep. I was like, what if my destiny is somewhere else? What if, what if? And um, when I sit down again to talk with my mom about it, she told me, Olga, like, if you would go, what, what, what do you want to do? And I said, you know, like, all my life when I was skating, I thought that in my next life, i definitely going to be an actress or a singer. And I love music, and I went to theater school when I was younger. So I thought, like, I definitely would choose a different path for me. But now it's kind of too late. I'm 20. Uh, and my mom laughed at me. She's like, you don't understand. You're only 20. And you have an opportunity to go and learn English and, and, and be in a country you really liked and pursue the dream. It's like you, I see that you belong to a dream, you're the kind of person you need a goal, you need a dream, you have so much drive, and I see that you're wasting your life, basically. So she kind of encouraged me to get that one-way plane ticket, and I end up in Canada uh, exactly 11 years ago. Wow. So that's a kind of short version. <laughs> <laughs> that is a heck oh, of a... Happened? That's a heck of a story. I have to say that. And getting back to figure skating for just a little bit, and um, how far are we away from, um, you know, possibly qualifying for the Olympics? I mean, you won some um, silvers and golds in um, your country and also in um, in Canada and a few other places as well, too. And um, how close were you, um, you know, being considered for uh, being in the Olympics? I actually qualified for Olympics for Turin, but um that but i never I, I never had a chance to go mm -hmm. so that would be kind of my biggest disappointment in my life because every athlete's goal is to go to olympics now was this before but, now was this before or after the injury uh that was before the injury i got injured the next year i got qualified but um, I, I started to have back problems already earlier in my career, so it wasn't kind of the first, um, it, there, there wasn't, I would say the accident was really closely tied to my injury before. I started having spine problems when I was 14, and I had to wear a brace, and they couldn't figure out for the longest time what I have, and, and doctors were saying that I just have a very weak back, and my back is not suitable for such a harsh impact on the ice for the, for the jumps I was doing. So I was doing a lot of physio on my back. So And it got better, it got better. But um, when I qualified for Turin uh, Winter Olympics Games, I, I had, again, that was probably the worst time, the worst season for me. Uh, I just came back from European Championship, and uh, my back was literally killing me i i had to take some time off so um we made a decision to try to properly recover and have a good season the next year um and i thought oh okay there is 2010 olympic games so i still have lots of time so it's um it's not a big deal but if i had this is one thing i a little bit regret about if i had a chance to rethink that decision and to go back. And if I knew that my career going to end the, in the next year, I would probably risk it and I would probably risk my injury and I would go because that was, that was my kind of like biggest hope. That's what I was dreaming about. Mm -hmm. um, it was a bit hard to watch it on TV knowing that 
I could have been there. But at that time, my team and my coaches were made the decision to to skip uh, the rest of the season to properly recover and uh, to have a, a better chance uh, for for successful performances years ahead. But unfortunately, it it, it ended. Unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're very sorry to hear that, but you got a really good career ahead of you. And um, and before we uh, get into your singing career, who are some of your favorite um, figure skaters growing up? Oh, definitely, I would say Tara Lipinski and Michelle Kwan. I remember when I was um, super young, I was sitting in front of a TV. Uh, watching the Ghana Olympic Games where Tara Lipinski got the gold. And she was so young and she was so smiley after every single jump. I, uh, until today, I remember every single step of her program. I think I watched it like 100 times. Um, and Michelle Kwan, she has such a beautiful grace. And um, I don't know, I don't remember if I have any skater until today, I could say, skated with the same grace as Michelle Kwan. So those were definitely my um, top two skaters of all time. And I remember when I watched the Nagano Olympic Games, we still had those old, um, how it's called, cassettes, you know, when you put in a DVD player. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I would record um, the performances. And I would watch so many times Charlie Lipinski performance that... Um, the cassette uh, broke. Ooh. Like they actually, I don't know, something happened to the to the um, film inside of it. So, and I remember asking my my dad to fix it, and he couldn't. So it's just a, such a, a vivid memory of mine recording all those performances from Olympic Games and on the cassette and rewatching. Kind of, I would say I didn't know what manifestation meant at that time, but I think I was manifesting and thinking that one day I'm going to be on the Olympic ice. And I don't think I cared about the medal. I just like so wanted to see the Olympic flag and, and um, yeah, and skate for my country. It's, it's such an honor. Um, this is the only, I guess, regret I had in, in my sport career. I wish I had a chance to mm-hmm to say that I'm Olympian skater. Mm-hmm. And, and also we'll talk about the movie that uh, involves you and being, um, you know, figure skating, but first listen to the Mike Widener show at the Mike Widener show.com. Powered by Sonic web studios, visit online at Sonic web studios.com for all you need. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic web studios is the answer. Sonic web studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with former figure skater, now actress, singer, and comedian Olga Korsak here on the Mike Wagner Show from Riga, Latvia, now based in Toronto, Canada. And you went from figure skating and you did some singing and acting. And there's also a movie out called The Pretikor, which is set to uh, be released in 2020, along with a couple of um, Russian figure skaters. And um, they're featured in the, um, the, the World Olympics as well, too. And um, tell us more about the movie The, the Pretikor. Uh, sure, gladly. <laughs> um, I guess um, I would have to go and tell you the story of um, a little bit of how all this started to give you a bigger picture, how incredible sometimes coincidence in, in life is, mm-hmm. uh, coincidence in life are. Um, when I just started acting, I, I came to Canada 11 years ago. I started taking classes, learning English, taking dialect classes. And one of my first auditions was for the skating movie. I heard the, the, the casting for the skating movie. I knew I'm not ready for it. I just started. I didn't have the confidence, nor I had the um, good English at that time. But I went, 
and I met with the director and read for the part. It was my, I think, my second year in Canada. I just arrived, basically. And um, she told me that um, I'm not good of an actress, and and it was it was, I guess, first um, acting kind of like traumatic experience. I think every actor has that when when they've been told that they're not good enough or they shouldn't try. Um, but th- that didn't discourage me. I knew that I'm green and I need to work harder and it's a new country. It's completely different for me. But it was a good push because I'm the kind of person even like going back to, to skating and, and having that picture um, of me stepping on the ice when I was five years old and have kids laughing at me. I always wanted my whole life to prove something, to prove to myself, to others. That was my kind of like motivation. So I remember leaving that audition room and thinking, oh, you think I'm not good enough? Okay, one day we shall meet again. And I continued taking classes, got an um, acting agency, started working on my music, got a label deal. So I was really busy and I had a goal. And I think for the second time in my life I felt like myself, having a goal, having something to work for and, and have a goal to wake up something for. And I realized that I did a great, 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 great decision. And uh, I completely forgot about this movie. And then I kept in touch with one of the producers um, of this this uh, picture. And um, she told me that they never shot the movie because they had some difficulties and they were missing some budget. And all of a sudden, my agent told me that um, told me that there is an audition and they're auditioning for a figure skater, and it was kind of like deja vu. I'm like, what? Like, uh, I'm like, that's already happened to me uh, about eight years ago. And I went to audition, and they were auditioning for the same part, but eight years later. And I met the director again, and I end up booking the role mm-hmm. <laughs> for nice. this movie. Uh, playing the figure skater, former figure skater, who, despite all her failures, discovers the strength in her to come back on the ice and um, pursue her goals. It was it was really interesting from the perspective that I was a figure skater and never had a proper closure in my career. I I never had a chance to properly say goodbye because when I came back from Worlds. I went straight to the hospital and then I tried again a little bit on the ice and it didn't work and there was so much frustration and sadness and weight of unfulfilled dreams that I never had a proper closure with my career. And when I booked that role, I knew it was going to be really tough because I had to revisit all my memories plus I decided that I'm going to do all the tricks myself Uh, we've been working with choreographers and coaches for eight months to get me ready for the skating parts of this movie and um, despite me thinking that it would be really really hard to get ready for this it actually was super um, fulfilling in a way that I could properly I guess like let it go um, this program I skated in the movie, it kind of felt like I did my last program. It's like, you always want to know that this is your last performance in a way. So you have a proper, again, closure with, with your career. It's like, I guess it's like relationship. And, um, yeah, it, it was interesting that I had auditioned for this part eight years ago and I've been told that, uh, I should not act, and then I get a chance to re-audition and get the role, and not only get the role, but get the role of my dreams and, and do what I actually did for 15 years and use this knowledge. Um, in a sense, I felt without the movie that I'm playing myself. It's very, very interesting. Every time I think about it, I, I'm very surprised how coincidental like all the events 
leading to this role happened. It, it sounds amazing as well, too. I was going to ask you as well, too, like with some of the scenes that you had to recreate, if that brought like any trauma or PTSD or anything like that. But then you managed to overcome and just like you said, but pretty much put a closure to your career when you ended, um, you know, with your character winning the competition in the movie. Yes, I, I, I was like, yeah, it, it was an amazing opportunity to finally um, say goodbye, but in a very healthy and very fulfilled way. I knew that at that moment that the skating world, all the memories with it, it's all in the past and now and look something forward. But I don't need to look back and regret about the things um, with my sport career. So it was definitely a blessing in disguise to book this role because in a sense, it, it didn't bring any PTSD or bad memories. Instead, it just healed me in a very, very healthy way. And, my, and I myself was super surprised about it. I, I never thought that that's how it would go. Mm -hmm. And that's fantastic too. You also been in a couple other movies like unmasking and artificial selection. And, um, tell us about those two films. Unmasking was very close to my heart project. I co-wrote this movie, uh, with a friend of mine, um, Canadian director, Rob Como. Uh, it was, we were just sitting in the living room one day several years ago and we were talking about mental health and he's a very big advocate on mental health. And we were talking how hard sometimes it is to open up or to tell someone. We talked about my career and how sometimes I have the memories of it and it's hard on a daily basis for me to open up to people and say what I actually feel. And I brought up saying that it's almost like I'm wearing the mask I really want to take off. Um, and then I saw right away there was a light bulb in his eyes and, and he said, um, why don't we write a movie about it? So we spent some time writing it. He, he took, um, responsibility of writing it and we worked on some little parts and then we spent some time to find a right actor for this part. This movie was very, very emotional in the sense that I think in the movie I had to open up a little bit and encourage other people who go into the tough time to kind of take off the mask. And we actually used the real mask. We had to um, make a silicone mask uh, of my face and half of the movie I'm spending in that mask with a heavy breathing on the back. Um, it, it's really emotional. And I have so many memories about it because originally um, the my boyfriend in the movie who I will end up opening up to uh, supposed to play my and Rob's friend who um, just a couple of weeks before we cast him and before he read the script, I think he, he loved it, he got diagnosed uh, with a tumor, with a brain tumor. And by the time we finished shooting this movie he unfortunately passed away and it was very emotional for both of us and we kind of in our thoughts and, and and dedicated this movie to him um and we saw his battle with with a, with, a, with a cancer and it was really hard for us so this movie played a very big part in our lives and in a in the acting community in Toronto um yeah it it was a hard movie to to shoot and hard movie to to work on uh in the movie artificial selection it was the movie i did i think 5 years ago it, it should premiere on netflix um sometime soon i don't know when exactly because of all the pandemic situation um not going to reveal the story about it so people can check it out later online and, and see for themselves because I don't think even I can um, 
tell tell the story and give it away. No, so I'm going to be hush hush about it. No, 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 that, no that's <laughs> Not fine. To get in trouble. No, no, that's fine. As soon as it comes out, we'd love to have you back on and talk more about it. You also have another project coming up in later 2020 called Nuri Safety City. You can just uh, give us a um a brief um a brief story about it. Um, Safety City was supposed to actually depart to Korea a couple of weeks ago uh, to shoot it, but due to the situation, everything being postponed and canceled, that we don't know uh, when we're going to restart. I spent eight months taking martial art lessons and working with the fitness coaches because I'm playing sort of a badass um character with some sick martial arts skills so i went through a serious training for this one as well and now we're kind of waiting to see what's happening because we're supposed to shoot in korea then we supposed to go to la and um, come back shoot other parts in toronto but for now we don't know until until when everything is postponed at this point. Okay. And, and do us a favor, keep us up to date on the situation. We'll play one of your um, songs tied to the movie The Patrick Corps. But first, listen to The Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on the Mike Widener Show.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with former figure skater, now actress, singer Olga Korsak here on the Mike Widener Show talking about a couple of her movies and the one that's coming out right now, the Hatchikor. Talk about... Um, about a figure skater trying to live out a dream. It's almost like her life story and um, wrapping up and also talking about a couple of movies that are in the works. But right now, here's one of the songs from the movie, The Hatcher Course. She goes by the name of Leva. Here's Olga Korsak, best known as Leva, with Isn't It Funny from Behind Closed Doors, right here on the Mike Widener Show. <laughs>
Okay, we have some technical difficulties here on the Mike Wagner Show. We apologize, but that's the um, song, Isn't That Funny, from the Patrick Horry here on the Mike Wagner Show. And tell us more about that song, Isn't That Funny, and what inspired you to write the song? Well, I have this thing, uh, and I think a lot of people can relate. Sometimes I push good things from my life, and I don't know why I'm doing it. It's kind of, um, I don't know. Part of being a human, I guess, we self, self-sabotage ourselves sometimes and we don't know even why. We definitely wish for the best for us and we want the best for ourselves. But sometimes there's like um, an error happens, uh, I guess. And um, I find sometimes I, I would miss important auditions, calls, or I would completely mess up my relationship and I don't know even why I'm doing this. So that's what inspired me to write this song about how sometimes without our own knowledge, we, we push things, mm-hmm. good things from our life. And of course, looking forward to more music as well, too. You also have an album all keep behind closed doors, which uh, came out in, um, is it 2014, if I'm correct? And tell us more about that yes. uh, album. Uh, this album was my debut album. I work with some producers from London, UK, and some producers from Latvia as well. The album did itself really good. It sold more than 10,000 copies in in Canada. Nice. And we did it independently. So I was really proud of it. Now when I look back, it's it's really hard for me to listen to those songs because I'm so self-critical and I hear my very harsh accent and... I was thinking what I was thinking about this note or this and why did I write this? So I guess a lot of creative people always look at their work and, and I know even a lot of actors, they never watch their own movies. They just can't. So I have exactly the same thing. So I, I'm trying to be proud of it. This is kind of my thing. It's my goal for 2020, like kind of my new new resolution to be proud of my past work and stop judging myself. Um, I, I, I'm happy how it turned out without without any support of any major um, labels and we did everything ourselves from, from the cover to the whole 12 tunes of it. And I'm, I guess I, 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 I am proud. Of it. <laughs> it it's amazing. Sometimes. It sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it takes time. You know, I, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I guess some people uh, who would listen also can relate. It's just so hard sometimes to stop being so self critical and judgmental. That's why I always stay away from listening to my old songs. Even the songs that I, I write, even I wrote six months ago, I, I listen to them and I'm like, Hmm, really? So I guess I I need to work on that. <laughs> mm-hmm. But but of course a lot of people are um you know really get into the music, they download, they purchase and all the uh the streams. He also had some other singles, minus times two, Y O U in capital letters and Why Do You Want Me So Much, released at the end of two thousand eighteen and tell us more about those singles. Uh, those singles are collaboration between me and my producer, Jovan Jovanov. It was a very interesting um, friendship we friendship and and work um, relationship we established. Uh, it was approximately three years ago when I met a producer in Tina Cole. She's one of um, an amazing independent producer here in Ontario. And I had a pleasure meeting her. And I was working with a different producer at the time and show her some songs and get an advice of, like, where should I go, which direction. Um, and she told me, like, you know what, I have this producer. He is from Europe as well, like you. She's like, I don't know why. I think it's going to be a good match. So, because I, I felt that 
something was missing from my songs and I didn't know what exactly was missing. And probably the previous people I was working with, it probably wasn't the best match, not because something was wrong, but it's just like energetically we didn't connect the way we connect right now with my producer. So she brought me to his studio and I showed him some of my ideas and he picked up some songs and we just started working on them. And we decided to release one song at a time and see how it goes. And and now it's kind of a blessing for both of us being in a lockdown because I'm I'm in the studio right now almost every second day and we work on so many new songs and we're probably going to release another EP later this year. And my followers are really, really happy about this because I finally have time to actually work on some music because um, if not for the quarantine, I would probably be in Korea right now shooting and then we would uh, shoot in Canada and then... Uh, we had a scheduling going for some festivals to promote Petrichor. So basically, my schedule was all planned out until almost September. So now I have some quiet time. And even after um, I will stop talking to you, I'm mm-hmm. going to go in and write. So, so I'm <laughs> I'm excited because I honestly, like for, for the past year, I really, really wanted to sit down for for a couple of months and just write. I, I had such a crazy passion for writing and, and, and there were so many ideas and there's so many people I I wanted to collaborate and now we're working with some producers from Brazil and from Madrid and I, I never had time to work with them because by the time I write something and send them for the feedback, they're super busy, they reply to me in like three weeks and then I already don't like the melody I wrote, I had to rewrite again and my producer wasn't available to record the, the vocals because we had other songs planned out and we had to write the music for the Petrichor as well. The soundtrack, main soundtrack from Petrichor is also uh, mine and my producer written song. So it was like so hectic and when all of this happened with the coronavirus, which is so unfortunate because so many people are losing their lives and and the economic situation is probably not the best. Mm-hmm. But um, it's for me, it's kind of like blessing in the skies because I will have a quiet time right now, like just write and write. Mm-hmm. And it's really therapeutic, I find it. It, it sounds like you got your plan coming up in 2020 as well, too. You got them well laid out and everything else. And there's a couple more things here. We're here with um, Olga Korsak, our best known singer, Leva, here on the Mike Wagner Show, former figure skater, now actress and singer, born in Latvia, now in Toronto. would like to have her back on again sometime soon. Just a few minutes here, Olga. Um, who are your favorite artists and uh, singers and um, actors growing up? Oh, I have such a long list. <laughs> I have such a long list. Um, I'm a huge fan of jazz music. And to be honest, I, I don't know how that happened because I never had an access growing up back in Russia to the jazz music. But somehow later in life, I started listening to you know, Simone, uh, Ray Charles, um, Ella Fitzgerald. And I, I, I don't know how that happened. And later on, I was a big fan of Amy Winehouse. It it didn't influence my music because I'm more of a pop artist. And then uh, later on, um, I would really love the the new pop artists like Love and Lennon Stella, which is also a Canadian artist. Um, And I'm also a very huge fan of electronic music. I am um, crazy about... um, a lot of uh, German producers and, and DJs like Ben Bochmer or um, Christian Loeffler, uh, Jen Blanquist. Um, I'm just in love with electronic tunes and and I'm actually working on a couple of electronic uh, singles right now with um, electronic music producers from Europe at the moment as well. So, um, yeah. Somehow happened that I I got really hooked in in, in different genres and they're so different. But um, depending on my mood, sometimes I wake up and I really want to listen to classical music. So <laughs> it's 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 very interesting. I have such a such a I guess 
messy personality that um, it always a different mood, a different tune. I would say. Mm-hmm. You, you talked about uh, being influenced by jazz, and uh, any plans for an upcoming um, jazz album or anything, anything tied to jazz uh, down the road? I don't think so, because my first album, Behind Closed Doors, was a tiny bit influenced by jazz and, and the artists like Fiona Apple. Um, so it was like a little bit mix of, of jazz and um, indie music. So, but, but somehow we completely went different direction with that producer, and we end up in experimenting in different uh, direction of the pop music. So I don't think so, but later in life if I would have an opportunity and time I would definitely want to work on some jazz tunes but for now I would leave that to people who actually best suited for this (laughs) and I will stick to my pop world (laughs) (laughs) and and, and of course sounds like you're doing really well with movies and merging everything all together and tying into one and of course you uh you, you did really well with the Patrick Hoare, which is coming up. You talk about it so well. And uh, who are your favorite actors and actresses uh, growing up, and what were some of your favorite movies? Uh, to be honest, uh, one of my uh, favorite actors, who I grew up on his movies when I was younger, who actually played my dad in Patrick Hoare. He's a very famous Russian actor, Alexei Serebrikov. Um, and he played my, my dad in a movie, Patrick Hoare. It's very interesting because when when I got even the part and I knew that I'm playing alongside him, I was so excited. And I think my mom was also more excited that I had I, I have a chance to meet him. Not that I booked the lead role. She was more excited about it. Oh my <laughs> goodness! So, so I think I think she's even excited to see the movie because he's in it. It's it's very funny. It's like our inside joke in our family because how excited because he's like a Brad Pitt uh, of Russia. So everybody, every single person knows who he is and I had such a tremendous opportunity, amazing opportunity to learn from him uh, in this two months of shooting Petricor. That is amazing. Um, and, and, and I can imagine as well, too, it's like, Dad, Dad, oh, it's Alexi. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. You're not my dad. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. My, my, my dad was also super excited he's also one of his favorite actors so yeah he was he's always jokes around and saying oh my god i, I want to see how he does me and i'm like dad he's like he didn't play like you <laughs> uh, so, don't, don't uh, create confusion dad that's all i could tell you <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and of course, very... and of course, getting back to some of your movies as well too. It's just like you know, I, I mean, I never had this before. Your favorite actor playing one of your parents. I've never experienced that before with anybody. Yeah, it's it's it, again. This movie is just a, a crazy kind of like I would say like magical uh, ball of coincidences and and I don't know. It's just like so interesting in every possible way how everything came together like with a scanning with a getting my my first lead and having my favorite actor in it so sometimes when when i booked it i couldn't even believe it i would wake up in the morning and think oh my god is it really happening or is it just a dream because it totally felt like a dream it didn't feel like it's a reality because it, it would be something you would write in a movie and it, it happened with Patrick Orr. So that's why I think for the rest of my life, it's going to be probably one of the most memorable experiences of my life purely because of all those crazy coincidences. Mm-hmm. And of course, speaking of uh, instances as well, too, what do you consider your most uh, funniest moment you ever experienced, either on film or in a studio or, say, on the um, the skating rink? Oh, I, I I don't know like if it's funny, but it was funny for me coming on set one day and forgetting one of my skates. <laughs> we had to get a runner, drive back home, and I, I don't know how that happened because I I'm always so good at packing, and uh, for me going on set is such a like miracle, and I'm super excited, so I always check my bags, and I don't know how that happened, and then yeah, and then we had to send the runner 
to go back and get the skate and the skate was like right in my living room oh, no. like sitting there and it, it was funny um we laughed a lot because it, it just <laughs> like the only thing i had to bring on set and i forgot it so um, um there was like so many funny moments but it's just like Sometimes it's so inappropriate to tell tell them in an interview, and sometimes uh, you just like you forget because so much um, going on. But um, really interesting that we shot the all the skating parts of the movie on the rink overnight. It was super cold, and I remember it was super super foggy. Um, and, and I I just was in this tiny dress and. That was the only time when I was like, why am I doing this? This is so cold and this is um, so hard um, because we practice on such a beautiful skating ring. But when we start shooting, we, we run into so many troubles with the permits and um, time. Every rink was busy with so many hockey teams and, and skating practices. That's why it was impossible to get the ice. And the only time we could shoot is overnight. It was so hard and I remember shooting daytime then nighttime and not even realizing like which day and what time is it um, and I, I also when we were shooting the movie I moved houses I moved uh, from one house to, to an apartment because the basement of this house was flooded oh no and uh, I remember twice not even once twice because I was so tired coming from set from those overnight uh, shootings that I would go, drive back to my old house and then I would would not figure out why I can get in and I would get all frustrated and my key doesn't work and I'm like, what's happening? I just want to sleep. And then I would realize that I came to an old house and, and I, I don't have keys from, from it anymore. <laughs> no, there is any furniture or anyone. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just like, and it happened twice. And the second time, I just didn't clue in that that's exactly what I did a couple of days before. And I remember sitting on a doorstep and then my neighbor it was something like seven in the morning would, would walk by and she's like, Olga, like, what are you doing here? I'm like, my key doesn't work. I don't know what to do. And she's like, didn't you move out three weeks ago? Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I did. Thank you so much. So I was just like, waste an hour of my time. Thank God, like, the houses are, are just, like, 10 minutes apart. But it's it just, like, it, it, my brain was so shut off. It, 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 I couldn't think about anything that I was just, like, sitting on my doorstep and and being, like, like a, this lonely cat. Scratching <laughs> 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 the door and being, like, let me in. I just want to sleep from my night shift. Uh, wrong house here. <laughs> right church, wrong pew, they say. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it was. Oh my uh, goodness! I, I'm looking forward to uh, speaking with you more about your um your your uh, next ventures as well too, and uh, a couple more things with um Olga Korsak here on the Mike Wagner Show. Who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Uh, repeat that. I'm sorry. Biggest influence, yes, in your career. In my acting or music? Uh, it can be both. It can be both. You want me to name names of the actors? Um, if if you like, it's up to you. Um, you know, strange enough, every time I have this question, I freeze. Because, to be honest, I don't know. Like, a lot of actors know a distinct a, a, a answer to this question, and, and they have a list of actors who really influenced their work and they've been watching and analyzing their acting. But for me, it wasn't the past, really. In a sense, like, I still watch a lot of movies. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm constantly discovering new directors and I watch international movies as well. And I watch uh, all the new Hollywood movies and I watch uh, Russian and, and European and I try to during Toronto Film Festival to watch a lot of movies. Um, but I, I, I still haven't figured out how to answer this question, to be honest, because when I started acting, my biggest problem was de dealing with the um, overflowing of my emotions and how to control them in, a, in the right direction, and I didn't know what to do with them. 
and I had to work a lot with the acting coaches and, and with psychiatrists to figure out how to open up and have it real for me in my own way. So, so it wasn't like there was a light bulb when I watched a certain movie or it wasn't like a director. Like there's so many great movies and, um, even like every, every three months I have like a top three movies, which I, for me, the top three is uh, the movies I, I watched several times and I admire the acting, but I never kind of like see like that influencing my career. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, very weird question. I think I need to do some homework on it to <laughs> learn how to reply better and there'll um, be and there'll be a quiz after this so <laughs> what's the yeah, be- <laughs> <laughs> next time we'll do yeah. that so what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point the best advice i've got yes the best advice you give to, you can give to anybody at this point don't compare yourself to anyone because everybody has a unique path and everybody's so unique and once you figure out that there's only you, there's only one copy of you, there's nobody else like you, it gives you a tremendous power to know that you're the only one. And I think I, I did a lot of mistakes in my career trying to compare myself to other actors and uh, being ashamed of my accent and trying to hide who I am. And when you try to become somebody you're not, People can sense the fakeness. People can sense that you're not sincere. And it, it becomes boring. I think copying and being, being like somebody else or trying to be somebody else, it's, it's, it's boring. And once you embrace who you are, truly who you are, and being happy. Now, I like I love my accent. I, I'm listening sometimes uh, things that record, and I don't even want to smooth it out. Like when we when we go and we record with my uh, vocal coach, uh, she also she loves my accent. She's like, oh, like we, we're gonna smooth it out so people know exactly what he's saying, but we're gonna leave it because that's who you are. And it took me so many years actually to be comfortable with who I am. And once I did it, it's kind of my career took off in both direction. And I wish somebody told me that earlier, or I learned that er- earlier that there's only one of me. Like, I'm the only one like that, and that's what is cool about me. That does sound, ta- sound fantastic. You're a very unique personality, a very unique, and we'd love to have you back on as well. Once again, Olga Korzak, best known as Leave of the Singer on the Mike Wagner Show, former figure skitter, now actress and singer. We'll um, get to her comedy next time we uh, talk as well, too. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact you, and where can people purchase or listen to your music and your movies? Well, definitely for music is Spotify. Go on Spotify. My stage name is Liva. It's L-I-V-V-A. Uh, also, you can follow me on Instagram, L-I-V-V-A Music, Liva Music. You can drop me a message, say hi. I'm going to follow you back. We're going to become friends. And, and I will post all the information there about my upcoming movies and new releases, festivals I'm going uh, new music. Also, my music is available anywhere on all the platforms. It, it, it's Apple Music, iTunes, um, again, Spotify, SoundCloud. So whatever pl- platform you're using, you can find me there. And in terms of the movies, again, if you follow me on Instagram, I will definitely announce there on my stories or, or posts when the movie is out or where you can see it. Um, and masking, that's the only movie which is out already. You can, you can find it, uh, in Vimeo. So you can also drop me a link on Instagram and I can send you the link to, to watch the unmasking. Sounds great. Olga, just want to say a big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor, keep us up to date and, um, love to have you back on sometime uh, later in 2020 and beyond. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was lovely to chat with you. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. 
Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.